Where? Where am I? That's so loud. What's that noise? I lost them. Where did they go? Where did my kids go? Are they down here? Are they in here? I bet they're in here. Oh, that looks so pretty. The kids and I love the ocean. Oh, I bet the kids are already down playing in the sand. Beautiful. Oh no, the waves, the waves are big. I don't see them. They send the kids. Oh, oh, the kid's too close. Oh, no, no. <gasps> it's okay, you're safe. Let's go to your room. Kids, find the ocean, get not We've safe. We've been over this before. Your kids aren't here, and we are not at the ocean. It's okay. Come with me. I'll take you to your room. This way. Oh, I missed a call from Heather. I should call her back real quick. The keys of my are hurting. Oh, my feet hurt. I need to find her. Where did she go? Where is the bathroom? Is this, is, is this it? I need to make sure the kids are safe. This does not look right. Oh, here it is. Ugh, let me find my key. This is my room. Oh, if I could just... Why is this so difficult? There you are. Where have you been? Want to help me fold some towels? There she is. Why, why is she not helping me find the kid? Can you help me fold these what towels? What is she asking? me. No. Find the bathroom. Find my kids. Do you want to give me a hand? Here, you know how to do it. What? No, I... No, no, I need to go back to the beach. The kids are playing near the water. I need some... There is no beach, else. and your kids aren't here right now. Do you want to do the purple No, one? there is no time. No, no, I need to go in Where here. Where are you going? Don't you like helping me with laundry? No, th this is where I need to be. It's time for bed. It's getting dark. Where are the kids? I, are you sure I can't. You don't come it's help me? dark. Uh, what's that? Uh, there's a man in here. Where, where did he come from? Why is he here? I need to get out of here. What is going no, on? no, no, no. Are, right? are you okay? No, no, no. You are okay. There was a there man. Is no man. It's just me here with you. You're I, safe. I do here. get to see. Come out here with no, me. You're no safe. Kids. Oh no. They are close. Wave. Oh, where? Help me. Help me out here. Find the ocean. Kids. No, I can't. <laughs> No, no, I can't. It's Where? okay. Who was You're going to be okay. There no, it's no okay. No, There's no man no, in there. You're I safe. Can't. It's okay. No, You're okay. No. You're okay. Second floor. Did that change your perspective about how it might feel to have dementia? Hi, I'm Laura Wayman, world-renowned dementia care expert known as the Dementia Whisperer. Whether you are a professional who's caring for many, a family member who is caring for a loved one with dementia symptoms, or a community member such as a first responder, this information, Becoming Dementia Aware, will help you to change your care approach and have more meaningful moments with any individual who has dementia symptoms. Come with me.
I would like to share with you five tips and strategies that will help you to better connect, engage, and communicate with an individual who has any dementia symptoms. First tip and strategy I'd like to share with you is that we need to think for that person. The way I like to describe this is that a person who is experiencing dementia symptoms has what I call a broken thinker. A human needs to process all of these pieces of data that come to them, what they hear, what they see, how they move. And as we experienced our individual with dementia symptoms was having to process many pieces of data in our little story. When we saw that individual walk into the room and they were following, by the way, to find their room, they were following their caregiver, that caregiver easily found the room. They could process and think about how to get into the room, how to walk down the hall, but our individual was having a difficult time with that. So we saw them struggle because there were gaps in that, in that whole experience of processing how to get into the room, how to walk down the hall, and so therefore we saw them stumble and have challenges. Now, how do we think for them? Well, there are many different strategies on how to communicate and best think for them. One of the ways is to not ask them questions. If you think about it, when someone asks you a question, you have to think of the question and then think of an appropriate response. That comes easily to someone who can Think about, process, and understand this information, what they hear, what they see, all of that put together. So when someone has difficulties with that, it makes them feel anxious to try and come up with a response when they don't have all the information set in a row so that they can process it in a normal way. So we don't ask questions. Now, the third tip I'd like to talk to you about is along those same lines, but I like to say we're very careful about only giving that person information they can handle. So consider, once again, as we think about the experiences that we just watched on this video, think about how much information that that particular individual was trying to process at any given time. They were having to process balance and coordination and what, what they were hearing and what they were seeing and, and how frightening it was when what they were seeing was not being processed clearly. You know, momentarily, what that individual saw in the bathroom was a man when in reality, it was a sweatshirt hanging on a hanger. But because they were getting this information and couldn't process it normally, that's, that's why they had that hallucination, that visual that was distorted from the normal. So the fourth tip I'd like to talk about is along the same lines as don't ask questions, but instead of asking questions, we're going to give that person the answer in way of positive action statements. I like to to call this playing Dementia Jeopardy. In the game of Jeopardy, what we do is we give the answer and then that person has to come up with the question. But instead, what I want you to do is just give the answer. And how do we do that? We do that in a positive action statement. Instead of simply saying, are you hungry? Would you like to come to dinner? Which is making that person think and process Instead, we're going to say, come with me. I, I like it when we have dinner together. So we are thinking for them with these positive action statements. Come with me. And as we witnessed, it was so frustrating for that individual to receive information as a question. It made them anxious. It made them frustrated. So instead of saying, here, can you help me fold these towels? It's more I, I love it when you, when you are with me folding towels. You do this so wonderfully. You've helped, you help me. I love it when you help me. 
So that's a, a perfect example, as we saw, about thinking for them with these positive action statements, not asking questions. And the last tip I'd like to share with you is in our communication, we need to remember that what remains, what that person with dementia symptoms never loses, is their emotions and feelings. So when we are watching any behaviors, any challenges, when we're having difficulty communicating with that person, if we join them in whatever they're feeling and then distract them with these positive action statements, they are more likely to trust us rather than arguing with their feelings. Let's go back to when, when our individual walked into the room and they saw the beautiful or ocean scene, but their, their um, depth perception is somewhat distorted because of the dementia symptoms. And they felt like they were almost falling into that scene. And so they were trying to process this and having difficulty. And what did they feel? That, that actual fear of falling, like we felt when we were watching this on the video. And when that caregiver walked up and said, you're safe, I'm here with you, and did that positive action of actually helping that person feel safe, that's actually talking to those feelings of fear, talking to those actual feelings that are so real to that person. And we can say simple things like, I can only imagine how you feel, and I feel that way sometimes too. And that helps to join them in their dementia world where they are feeling these extremely strong and real feelings and, and they're having difficulty processing them. We're thinking for them. We're doing positive action statements. We're talking to their feelings. All of these things become our path to having these unbelievable, meaningful connections, that key to the dementia wonderland, that world that will help us to give that person a quality of life and more opportunities to feel loved, safe, secure, and valued. I go into details on how to fully implement these strategies in my book and DVDs, which are available on my website, laurawayman.com. As you review these resources, you will become more dementia aware, helping you to better connect and engage with that person who has dementia symptoms. What does it mean to become dementia aware? It is to have a perception of dementia and understand that we can't stop it, fix it, or change it, but we can manage it and have more positive interactions as we begin to understand what's behind these dementia symptoms. Join me in my I Am Dementia Aware movement. Thank you.